So it's Priya here and yes, now we have 3 DCS integrated with SOLIDWORKS. We come in as an add-on workbench uh, with two tabs. One is the 3DCS Variation Analyst Home tab, which covers all the basic functions like feature creation, model creation, analysis, and the reporting tool. And then we have a 3DCS add-on tab where we have the mechanical, complaint, and AAO functions. So now then we have a 3DCS model navigator tree, which exactly resembles the uh, SOLIDWORKS tree here. So the very first time when you bring in a model inside SOLIDWORKS, you need to do an update model, which will extract all the information from the SOLIDWORKS tree and put it into the 3DCS model navigator tree. So this, those, these two trees need to be uh, in sync always. Like for example, any changes done to the SOLIDWORKS tree, like uh, adding new parts, deleting, reordering, renaming, 3DCS model navigator tree gets updated by doing an update model. Could, yeah. yeah. Could you go back to the variation and show me that update model button? Oh yeah. This is the update model button where you need to do. This would be the only active button when you bring in a, a model fresh into 3DCS, and this needs to be done first in order to get the other functions active. So now that we're integrated, um, you can just open up a SolidWorks assembly, which would be this a medical lift assist yeah. update model, and you will get our tree when you are in our workbench and then you can start doing your tolerance analysis. Yeah, so I got a patient lift model assembly here. Uh, you can see how the parts are deviating. That's because of the applied moves and tolerances that I have added to the model. So let me go ahead and show the measurement. Uh, here I'm gonna need to measure the angle between these two rods here. So if I come in here, you can see the measurement that's getting highlighted in the screen. So I'm going to take an angle measurement and that measures the angle between those two rods. So let me go ahead and separate the model and run through the uh, moves that I've written to assemble this model here. The one main thing here is uh, I've used a multi-stage assembling process which assembles this plate and rod to a fixture tool which in turn assemble the whole sub-assembly into the top level assembly to the spine rod. So now let me run through the each moves here. So let me animate through. You can see how the plate goes into the fixture tool first, followed by the rod. This happens on the right side. So now that's the sub-assembly move. Now I'm gonna assemble this whole sub-assembly into, into the spine rod. So first thing is placing the spine rod in position and then bringing in the rod there. And we have a pattern move here at this stage, which aligns the whole pairs of the plate and the spine rod. There you go. So next, on the other side. And when you look into the move list, I've, for an example, I have used a, a combination of both analyst and mechanical moves so that I can cover both and show you the a model can be built with any combination. So the other set of moves uh, which assembles the rest of the parts would be all mechanical. I'm fixing the spine bar, putting in the piston rod, the bar, then goes the arm, and finally that's attaching. And also the main purpose of having the mechanical move here, this upper rod is free to rotate up and down, and that's a motion, so that's why I've used, used a mechanical move combination in it. So if we stop right here for a second, Priya, yep. uh, the key here is you can see those um, parts hanging out on the side, because this is a multi-stage, we can build sub-assemblies. They can have their own tolerances and their own, own build processes and their own measurements. It's like a little mini model. Then that finished sub-assembly can get assembled at the next stage. And so you can track your variation through your multi-stage system. Um, plus that rod assembly just bolts on. And so it's bolting on two, you know, two bolts through two holes, which requires a special move, which Priya was mentioning, which was the pattern move, that's going to look at the bolt position tolerance, hole size tolerance, pin size tolerances, and it's going to adjust that assembly to fit. And if it can't fit, it will pick out a no-build situation. 
So when we get to our results, you can see the effect of that pattern move. Yeah, now that we've run through the assembling process, now I need to get into the tolerance that I've added on the parts. So now let me separate the model. I'm gonna pick this part here. If I look into that part in the tree, that's the plate and you can see how the GDMT is saved in the part level. So if I turn on the mesh and deviate it, you can see how the mesh is deviating. That's because of the applied tolerances added to that part. So that's the GDNT. And this GDNT can be created in two ways. One, it can be done inside 3DCS using our GDNT function, or if this part already have embedded GDNT information that was created inside SOLIDWORKS, we can pull that inside 3DCS. So to do that, uh, first let me go ahead and delete this GDNT here. And now if I come back and do a deviation, you can see the mesh is not doing anything. This is because the part is now empty without any tolerance in it. So let's come back. And I'll try to show the part GDNT here. So because we're integrated, you can see she's now going to jump out of our workbench and she's going into Creo yeah. and just looking at that, I mean, SolidWorks, <laughs> and uh, looking at that part by itself in SolidWorks. Yeah. So this GDNT was created using uh, MVD dimension here. I've used these functions to create the, create the GDNT on this part. So you can see these parts have the tied up GDNT. Now, coming back to the assembly, um, I'm just gonna show you the function under update model, which is called update GDNT. So just by clicking this and selecting the part from which you wanna extract the GDNT, it pulls up all that and gives you a message, okay, these many GDNTs was extracted from that particular part. So this can be done either in a part level or from the root. So by selecting the root from the tree here, you can extract all the GDNT you know, for, from all the parts in the assembly in one go. So once I do that, you can see how this GDNT populated back inside this plate. Now, again, if I go ahead and deviate it, You can see how, again, the, the mesh is deviating back with the tolerances that I applied. So now this model have uh, part tolerances and also assembly uh, moves. The next step is I need to check the measurement results for that particular me measurement that I mentioned before. So before you go there, yeah. Priya, um, at the beginning you saw this assembly deviating, as Priya mentioned, which was including part variation and your assembly method. Now, and then she drilled down to just the part tolerance, so you can see the part tolerance. And she imported the GDNT from Creo, from SolidWorks. And the, the key here is, is we pull from SolidWorks, and then it's in our tree so that we can edit it if we have to change the tolerances. And um, because we want to do tolerance analysis and and modify tolerances. So once it's in our workbench, then we're free to change the tolerance. So Priya just double clicked and went into that position tolerance. And you can see this is the GDNT populated in our workbench. And from here, you can change your GDNT, you can change the tolerance as you're doing what if analysis.